This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hi, I'm Andy and today I'm going to go through a quick breakdown of the process that I did to create my Caramon fan art. I hope you like it, I hope you learned something. So the software that I used for this process was ZBrush for the modeling, Maya for the UVs and the low poly version, Substance for the textures, After Effects for the animated textures, and then Marmoset for the final render. And then I put it all together using After Effects again. For any project that I make, the first thing that I like to do is to collect some references. I like using peer reference to compile them all together and keep them organized. I usually search for different interpretations of the character, either illustrations made by artists or official images, or even if the character has appeared in video games, I like searching for gameplay. Really anything that will help me come up with an idea will work. And once that's done, I'll start working on the model itself. Well, the main model is very simple. And most of the tools that I use are from the Shane Olsen 3D Character Workshop, which is really good and I really hope you get to check it out. It's definitely worth your money. However, the brushes that I use, and I believe the interface as well, are free and can be downloaded from his website. Uh, say the tentacles and the antennas were made using the Insert Mesh brush and I use the option appendage, which is really useful and I use it all the time. Just add it to the base of the head of the character and just use the taper tool and the bend shape curve to create the general shape. You can access both of these tools using the 3D gizmo. When using the bend curve tool, start with very few anchor points and once you have the general shape that you want, start adding more to create the details. The more anchor points that you add, the harder it gets to control, and the geometry can get a bit crazy, so keep that in mind. Uh, you, you can just use the move brush to continue shaping the tentacles, and then use C Remesher to clean the geometry along with the smooth brush. Uh, for these kind of models, the, it is very important to keep the geometry as clean as possible, so don't be afraid to use the C Remesher a lot. Even if you have to reduce some of the details, it's fine. It's once I finish working on the general shape of the model, I mask the tip and then I used the inflate from the deformation tab and generated the shape. Then I used the smooth and the inflate brushes to keep working on the shape and define it even more. Then I masked the tip and inverted the mask and then I pushed the geometry to create the cavity where the claw will be. And for the claw, I used the appendage from the insert mesh brush with the taper and the bend shape curve to create the claw itself. Then I use the move brush and the masks to polish the shape a bit more. So this is pretty much the process that I follow over and over using the insert mesh and then just reshape it. For the neck, I use the same brushes and I went with a more organic shape instead of the more triangular design from the original character. I also used a clip brush to flatten the shape a bit more. And once that was done, I used the serum measure and the smooth brush to polish the shape. And then I duplicated it and did the rest of them.
Once it was done, I just dynamized it all together and then I smoothed the seams as much as possible. For the tiny Kuramon, all I did was to create a base sphere and then just added more appendages to it, just like before, and then I used a combination of the taper, the bend shape curve, and the move brush to create all the shapes that I needed. Once I was done, I remeshed by union, and then I used the sculptures to get rid of the seams and smooth the general shapes. Then to design the eyes, just like I did with the head of Caramon, I drew the shape using a mask and then I just went around it using the detail brush while having the sculptures on to make it more noticeable and detailed. Once all the details are done, we can use the Decimation Master to reduce the polycon without compromising any of the details and then import it to Maya to create the low-poly version of the model. For the textures, I like to start with the base color and then I like to add darker tones on all the cavities. I use a darker color and then a mask editor to darken all the areas that I want. Then I add some occlusion using an even darker tone and the dirt generator. Then I like using gradients and lights to have even more color variation to them. I create a base color and then I add a grayscale conversion and then set the grayscale type to green or blue channel. Then you can add even more color variations by using the light generator and different levels of opacity. Then I start adding other colors to add the general details. Finally, I add an empty layer and start adding even more drastic colors. And then you start adding more details and gradients. The more time you spend on this part, the better. Take your time mixing the colors and adding more gradients and variations. That makes it all better. Gradients really do make it all better, so use them as much as you can whenever is possible. To add even more details, create an empty layer in overlay and just add highlights using the cavity and the occlusion as references. Since we put them before, you can use them to know where the light will hit the model and just play with that. For the shadows, just create another empty layer in multiply and then just accentuate the cavities with a darker color. And that's my general process to paint my characters. Just the base color and then a bunch of gradients and colors on top of it until you get to a result that you're happy with. Then as a final touch, you can add a general gradient to the whole model to make it look more cohesive. If possible, use 3D code to create a final gradient because the gradient tool in that software is really good. So just create it, export it, and then bring it back to Substance and then just put it in an overlay and it will look great. Once I finish the textures, I import them into After Effects, then using the Mask tool, I create some holes in it, and then using the Rough and Edges effect, I make it look a little bit more dramatic and detailed. And then I put a black solid underneath and render that image and that will be our base color once we get to Marmoset. And then we make a second version with the animated effect underneath and then we render it as a small short video that can be looped and that will be our emission in Marmoset. And finally we get to Marmoset
this is the general settings that I use to render the character. I like using very bright and almost neon-like colors to make it... I like using very bright and almost neon-like colors to make the character pop and look alive. I use a lot of camera settings to achieve this look. A lot of contrast and sharpness as well as a very strong vignette to add some extra tint of color to the image. Uh, the materials are usually pretty straightforward. The ones that have animated details on them have the Video Importer plugin. Um, this is also free and it can be downloaded from, from the Marmoset website. In terms of lights, since there is a lot of emission, I don't really use that many lights. Um, some um, For this, I use mostly white lights to evenly lit most of the areas. Um, all of them have a very light or blue-red color, but it's very subtle. And finally, I like to play with the depth of field and have as many camera angles as possible to get enough footage to edit it all together and create the final piece. So yeah, that's my general process and I hope you liked it and that you learned something from this and thank you.